This is Saurabh and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The BG Show with Aditya. Home food or outside food is a question that has dominated humanity for millennia. It's difficult to put a date as to when and why humans started consuming outside food. But we know a subtle reason as to why this was happening. When there is a large gathering, when we need to host a lot of people, the idea has been to host them in a restaurant and host parties because then it becomes the responsibility of the caterer slash the restaurant to provide the food instead of making all the effort at one's home of hosting more than 100 people it's better to go to a restaurant and spend a few bucks and make sure that it is the restaurant who does all the leg work and then of course the pride of saying my treat to someone is something which we cannot abstain ourselves from we just love using the word my treat let me take you outside for a meal this also means that it takes us off the responsibility of having to do all the legwork of preparing the dish and making sure that it is delicious and all the effort hasn't gone in vain. This does not just end here. The past decade, we have got influenced by cracked discussions on things like calorie, weight, and then what all is contained in the meal, whether it has the right amount of proteins, carbohydrates, whether it has saturated Facts. There descends the idea of nutrition, but nutrition is an illusion. Why? Because the idea of fast food or junk food is influenced by the geography and the emotions attached to it. For example, the idea of junk food to a certain geography or a certain demographic will be pizzas, burgers, tacos, donuts, for us, these are oily, salty and high sugar content foods. But when it comes to foods such as chole bature, vada pao, gulab jamuns, darvas, gullas, we hesitate before saying that these are junk foods. Why? Because they are associated with a certain region there is emotional attachment to it then it is easy to get blindsided by the regional attachment which means that we will never admit that chole bature is saturated salty but because it's part of a unique culture which has been going on for over centuries put this very food ingredient not in the fast food section of course, not in the healthy food section, but more in the emotional section of our food, which means that chole bhature dough should not be consumed every day. That is what a few individuals agree, but they will never say that chole bhaturas, samosas, vada paus and such are junk food. In fact, they will say with pride that they are a pride of a certain geography and a demography and of course by design or default the likes of chola bhatura vada paus and all its cousins are easier on the pocket which means that if you are a college student you can afford to have chola bhaturas every 15 days and it will still not affect your pocket money or any other source of income but you cannot consume pizzas every 15 days because it is heavy on your pocket. And the unique and the absurd notion that pizzas, burgers, donuts, tacos belong to a certain geographical region which we have commonly labeled as the West, along with the likes of cakes, pastries, donuts. Though they are very similar to the likes of rasgullas and gulab jamun, there is no difference in the sugary content of 
a cake or a pastry or a donut versus the gulab jamuns but the emotions associated with it the regional influence will not allow us to call these junk foods or sugary foods do for me a fast food or a junk food is a junk food whether it's chola bhatura pizzas tacos burgers or any of its cousins when it comes to junk food or fast food one can even add the likes of kebabs to it so if given an option if an individual has to by force consume a portion of the fast food and they have the option between kebabs samosas versus burgers pizzas tacos despite the knowledge that such foods are equal in terms of high fat content high sugary content and of course they are not exactly good for your stomach and individual especially in a certain geographical region will always prefer the kebabs or the samosa not only because of the geographical and the emotional influence but also because they are economical on an individual there is a certain wider here from where do you consume a samosa or a kebab is it in those swanky restaurants or is it in those unhealthy unhygienic street food environment whatever be the complications associated with going to a restaurant and eating food in these illusionary virus times in general it is easy for an individual to consume such fatty sugary and high content carbohydrate foods from a street vendor rather than going into the oval nature required in a restaurant and then of course the cost the billing that comes if in a restaurant the billing comes into thousands one can consume 10 times that on the street food vendor and then of course the emotions associated with the street food vendor we all know about the main aim is to understand that whether you consume pizzas burgers tacos pastries cakes or whether you consume the rasgullas the gulab jamun the chola bhaturas the kebabs and of course the samosas it's not about the regional influence we have to move beyond this abstract regional influence junk food or fast food whatever nomenclature suits an individual should not be influenced by the geographical region nor the attachment nor the emotions associated with it junk food is junk food whether it comes from the west or whether it's in the east of course the discussion is that the current pandemic and the illusionary virus has forced us to change our eating habits well that is never happening if an individual wants to consume pizza burger they should go ahead with it let's not get influenced by which of these food whether we have divided it into east or west as more fats or carbohydrates if pizza is bad then samosa is equally bad for your health if that is what is on your mind the illusion of health and both are equally bad for your health don't be influenced by the emotional attachment and the regional attachment ts eliot the wasteland she turns and looks a moment in the glass hardly aware of her departed lover her brain allows one half formed thought to pass well now that's done and i'm glad it's over when lovely woman stoops to folly and paces about her room again alone she smooths her hair with automatic hand and puts a record on the gramophone this music crept by me upon the waters and along the strand up queen victoria street oh city city i can sometimes hear beside a public bar in lower 
Thames Street, the pleasant whining of a mandolin and a clatter and a chatter from within, where fishermen lounge at noon, where the walls of Magnus Martyr hold inexplicable splendor of Ionian white and gold. The river sweats oil and tar. The barges drift with the turning tide. Red sails wide to leeward swing on the heavy spur. The barges wash drifting logs down Greenwich Reach past the Isle of Dogs. Vela Liela, Vala Liela. Elizabeth and Leicester beating oars. The stone was formed, a gilded shell, red and gold. The brisk swell, rippled boat shores. Southwest wind, carried downstream. The peal of bells, white towers. Vela Lea, Vala Liela. Trams and dusty trees. Highbury bore me, Richmond and Q undid me, by Richmond I raised my knees, supine on the floor of a narrow canoe. My feet are at Moorgate and my heart under my feet. After the event he wept, he promised a new start. I made no comment on Margate Sands. I can connect nothing with nothing. The broken fingernails of dirty hands. My people, humble people who expect nothing. La la la. To Carthage, then I come. Burning, 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 burning. O Lord, thou pluckest me out. O Lord, thou pluckest burning. Homer's Iliad Book 1 Down on the ground he dashed the scepter studded bright with golden nails, then took his seat again. The son of Atreus smouldered, glaring across at him, but Nestor rose between them. The man of winning words, the clear speaker of Palos, Sweeter than honey from his tongue, the voice flowed on and on. Two generations of mortal men he had seen go down by now. Those who were born and bred with him in the old days, in Palos's holy realm, and now he ruled the third. He pleaded with both kings, with clear good will. No more or enormous sorrow comes to all Achaea, how they would exult Priam and Priam's sons and all the Trojans. Oh, they'd leap for joy to hear the two of you battling on this way. You who excel us all, first in Achaean councils, first in the ways of war. Stop, please, listen to Nestor. You are both younger than I, and in my time I struck up with better men than you, even you, but never once did they make light of me. I have never seen such men, I never will again. Men like Pirithaus, Dryas, that fine captain, Canus and Exadius and Polyphemus, royal prince and Theseus, Aegeus's boy, a match for the immortals. They were the strongest mortals ever bred on earth, the strongest, and they fought against the strongest too. Shaggy centaurs, wild brutes of the mountains, they had them down, terrible, deadly work, and I was in their ranks, fresh out of Pylos, far away from home. They enlisted me themselves, and I fought on my own, a freelance, single-handed, and none of the men who walk the earth these days could battle with those fighters, none but they. 
They took to heart my counsel, mark my words. So now you listen too. Don't seize the girl, Agamemnon, powerful as you are. Leave her just as the sons of Achaea gave her his prize from the very first. And you, Achilles, never hope to fight it out with your king pitting force against his force. None can match the honors dealt a king, you know, a sceptered king to whom great Zeus gives glory. Strong as you are, a goddess was your mother. He has more power because he rules more men. Equities end your anger. Look! It's Nestor, I beg you, cool your fury against Achilles. Here the man stands all over Achaea's armies, one rugged bulwark braced for shocks of war. P.G. Woodhouse, stiff upper lip jeeves, but for you, Plan would have had me in the local calaboose in a matter of minutes. Who is he, by the way? I got the impression he was an explorer of sorts. Yes, sir. Pretty far-flung, I gathered. Extremely, sir. He has recently returned from an expedition into the interior of Brazil. He inherited the house where he resides from a deceased godfather. He breeds pocket spaniels, suffers somewhat from malaria and eats only non-fattening protein bread. You seem to have got him taped, all right? I made inquiries at the post office, sir. The person behind the counter was most informative. I also learned that Major Plank is an enthusiast on rugby football and is hockey come Mr. Invincible on the field. Yes, so he was telling me, you aren't a prop forward, are you, Jeeves? No, sir, indeed. I do not know what the term signifies. I don't either, except that it's something a team has to have. It's hoping to do down the opposition at rugby football. Plank, I believe, has searched high and low for one, but his event has been bootless. Rather sad when you come to think of it. All that money, all those cocker spaniels, all that protein bread, but no prop forward. Still, that's life. Yes, indeed, sir. I slid behind the steering wheel and told him to hop in. But I was forgetting you've got Stiffy's car. Then I'll be driving on. The sooner I get this statuette back into her custody, the better. He didn't shake his head because he never shakes his head. But he raised the southeast corner of a warning eyebrow. If you will pardon the suggestion, sir, I think it would be more advisable for me to take the object to Miss Bink. It would scarcely be prudent for you to enter the environments of total attacks with it on your person. You might encounter his lordship, I should say, Mr. Spood. I will, I'll be dashed. He had surprised me. Surely you aren't suggesting that he would frisk me? I think it highly possible, sir. In the conversation which I overheard, Mr. Spoot gave me the impression of being prepared to stop at nothing. If you will give me the object, I will see that Miss Bing restores it to the collection room at the earliest possible moment. I muse, but not for long. I was only too pleased to get rid of the beastly thing. Very well, if you say so, here you are. Though I think you are wronging Spood. I think not, sir. And blow me tight if he wasn't. Scarcely had I steered the car into the stable yard when a solid body darkened the horizon. 
and there was spoon looking like chief inspector with a spoon about to make a pinch booster he said speaking i said get out of the car he said i am going to search it for more awesome content tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with aditya